they have no tactical value whatsoever. Technically, the Protoss can use them. If they, technically, a Protoss player can use them. Really affect if they have a Dark Archon. They make good scout because then they because once they're mind controlled, they make good scouts. The enemy doesn't really suspect you using critters too much. Critters move on their own. They have a very they have a very, they have a random set they have a random they have a random program of what they have to they have a random algorithm of what they got to do. Um, for most critters, for since this is a twilight area, we're going to say Kakira. Or I think that's how it's pronounced. I'm not too sure. You can set anything else. You don't have to set any. You don't have to set just the plant specific critter. We're just going to use that because it's a little bit more appropriate. And quite honestly, I don't care. Well, that helps. This music will work. We'll turn it down. We're going to turn it down a little bit. Now you don't have to worry about these critters because they don't really impact anything. The next thing we're gonna do, and the next, now our next thing we want to do is we want to assign the reef, the mineral field. Every map is gonna need this unless it's a UMS. Now we're gonna create, we're gonna create our mineral field first. You have three different types of styles of how each mineral field looks. Set them in any order you want. While you, when you use the, when you use these, by the way, you can double click the mineral field and you can set different property and you can set the properties for them. Remember, these things right here that you see only apply to units. Same thing with this. However, when you double click the properties, you can adjust the sum amount of resources, excuse me, in a mineral field. Very interesting fact that the smaller the amount the smaller the amount in the pile, the different it the different it's gonna look. It's gonna keep dropping and dropping until it looks Something like that, where there's like barely anything. You can you technically, it's something you might want to consider, especially if you are making a map where you start off with low resources, or if you're just considering design in the area. Because like this is kind of because what we have right here, it looks kind of repetitive. So sometimes setting different values for the mineral fields can make the design look a lot better and possibly a lot more professional. You can also send a Vespain Geyser. Double click to adjust the properties of that yourself. When you're setting a map, but when you're when you're building a map, I'll tell you one thing. If you are if you construct if you make it start if you make the first player start off with a uh, a simulator for with an assimilator extractor or and or otherwise. Um, do be advised that that thing is technically also a Vespain geyser, meaning when that's destroyed, it's going to leave behind a geyser. So, that's one thing you might want to consider. Don't build an additional geyser. Don't build an assimilator and a ge another geyser. So, we have that. Now we're going to go, and how do we build another mineral tank? Now we'll build another mineral field. We won't do anything too, but... We won't do anything too crazy. We'll have that. And we'll have a Vespain geyser. Okay. Technically, your map is now complete. But we need to assign... But we need to create two more things. In order to successfully finish your map, well, that's right, I did delete that geyser. In order to successfully finish your map, you need to build a start location. You don't need to build any... All, all default maps do not need anything other than a start location.
Once you have assigned two start, you need at least two start locations, and all of which have to be in the same spot. And all, all of which, you need these two start locations. Nothing else needs to be done. Melee maps will not identify anything else you put into the, you put into them. So once you are done with that, so once you are done with that, you are technically ready to save your map. It's safe as. This is the compatibility warning. If you're using original StarCraft, you may not see this. If you're using, if you're using StarCraft, you may not see this. Like original StarCraft. I'm talking about raw original StarCraft. Not with Brood War. It will tell you the compatible versions of what this map can be used on right here. The incompatible versions will be used like this. StarCraft Enhanced, which is which is before one point which is before patch one which is before which is any versions after this patch cannot be used. Before this patch. So Another thing, another thing you have to realize that if you are trying to make an original map where you can just use Star, where you can just where you can just use regular StarCraft, um, this will tell you if you, what uh, Brood War units are in here. You cannot use a Brood War unit in an original StarCraft map. If you, everything else you've detected is fine, hit save, and this will pop up. We're gonna go. We're gonna exit out of that folder. I will show you, you need to save it in a certain folder on the StarCraft thing. In the StarCraft thing. I will actually open up uh, my computer to show you the exact pathway. You need to save it, when you get to StarCraft program things, just hit Maps. And after that, hit Save and your map can be found. Then where you saved it. I'll show you the exact pathway now. Of what I'll show you the exact plan of where you need to go. My computer, your operating system disk, program files, StarCraft, and maps. All of your maps have to go there. You can make side folders if you want. You can then make, you can make solid folders if you want. You can make any folder because then StarCraft will pick up those folders and then be able to uh, StarCraft will pick up those folders and then you can see them in game. But they have to go here. Anywhere else in the game will never be able to find them. I'll even show you. Note to people, Camtasia might screw up. I'll even put. You can see on the bottom right here, if you can see, tutorial. You can see toot. As soon as this starts to clear up. Another now another thing you can do right here, to make your map a little bit more interesting, especially if it's a melee map, is you can go down to scenario and you can click properties. As you saw, when, you, when I opened the map, it said Untitled Scenario. Uh, Untitled Scenario and stuff like that. That's where, that name, that's where you put that name is. It's probably spelled wrong. Description is that then little thing at the bottom. That tells you the description of the map. That tells you the description of the map. Be glad, just be, just don't ask, and listen to what I'm saying. Any man, any changes you make, just click regular save in order to save the map. Okay, now we have officially created the melee map. Now we're gonna get into a little bit more tricky stuff. Now we're getting into some tricky stuff. 
Now we're going to get into the stuff that people want me to do.